Guys, this might be the most awesome window animation I've seen. Holy biscuits! This is Zorin OS, and it recently celebrated 15 years of being a distro. It's an Ubuntu-based distro which focuses on being easy to use and friendly to users coming across from Windows. Judging by the website and screenshots, it looks very slick. Now, if you follow my channel, you will know I love a bit of history, testing out an old distro, for example, and Zorin have set up an OS archive of previous versions going all the way back to 2009. All of these desktops make a clear nod towards Windows and you can tell they are trying to keep the transition to Linux seamless. Righto, we are in the live CD. And if you have ever used GNOME, then this will seem familiar, but also different. The UI looks GNOME-like, but also more polished, almost like they've taken GNOME and made it seem Windows-esque. Okay, let's get on with the install. I'll speed things up a little so it doesn't take long. I should mention that Zorin OS comes in three flavors, core and educational, which are free, and the pro version, which is about 50 bucks. Now, I know paying for Linux may seem a foreign concept to some, but I don't mind it too much as long as the quality is there. Zorin offers a number of what it calls premium desktops with the pro version, as well as a lot of applications packaged with it. So you get desktops that match Mac OS and Windows and some other Linux systems. They basically look like very customized GNOME skins. I think they could give a bit more information on the offering, especially the list of applications that come with the paid version. All right, that was a very painless install, and this looks like a nice little tour to start. It's also telling me I have driver and software updates to install, so obviously the full Windows experience, jokes aside, I think removing housekeeping like driver files and updates is a good thing. A lot of Linux users, myself included, love to manage their OS, but in reality, there are a lot of Windows and Mac users who make the switch, who just wanna use their computer and then move on with their lives. So there are good signs from Zorin. So let's check out this UI. It will look very familiar if you are a GNOME user like I am, but there's obviously a lot of customizations applied. The menu look very organized and reminds me of the really good Windows Start menu, like the Windows XP era menu. So this is the free core version and it comes with an office suite and a good selection of applications. Also, since Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu and by extension Debian, we also have access to the vast apt library if we choose to install anything additional. The panel widget acts as a sort of mini control center, Wi-Fi, screen brightness, and volume control. There is, however, a notable lack of keyboard LED control. I have yet to see any Linux distro handle that well. The file manager Zorin comes with is the default GNOME application files. It is more than capable for what it is meant for. And I don't believe as a new user to Linux, you will have much trouble. As a power user, you may find files a bit restrictive, but I have gotten used to it myself. I do like the way the color scheme of the files icons and the menu highlights are consistent across the entire OS. This has a very premium feel. Now Zorin comes with the default GNOME Software Center, which can be a bit touch and go. It is reasonably easy to use and it looks attractive, at least compared to some other alternatives, but it can feel a bit slow at times. I would have liked to also have Synaptek installed with Zorin by default. It generally feels a bit more snappy, if not easy to use. I understand why they went with what they did. However, given who the OS is targeted at. The GNOME Control Center is a very mature systems configuration application. 
and you will likely find everything you need here. So I should also say that I'm noticing a little laggy behavior in the UI. I have installed Zorin on both my regular laptop and my MacBook Pro, and the results are the same. The wallpaper selection is very nice. Not extensive, but I love how the images are split into ones that work well with light and dark modes. So Zorin Appearance handles the theming and customizing area of the distro. Here it seems we are given a bit of a taste of what the paid version and its desktop modes look like. I'm not a huge fan of this sort of tease marketing. It does, however, look like they've put some good work into these layout options. One thing I'm seeing that I like about Zorin is that they have the distro, so it is easy to work with, but still feels like Linux. So often a distro wants to look like Mac OS or Windows 11 and stops feeling like Linux, but I think Zorin does a good job of bridging the gap without falling into it. A lot of these settings feel very much like GNOME++, like they've included add-ons and new settings to give the user more control over GNOME. I know a lot of Linux users will appreciate this level of control that's usually missing from a GNOME-centered distro. Desktop cube? Wow, these animations and transition effects look so good. I could just keep doing this all day. This is really stepping things up. I love UI effects that just make the desktop pop. I know it might seem a bit silly, a terminal does the job in the Linux world much quicker, but there's something about this level of polish. Window splitting seems to work very nicely as well. So one of the features I was really excited to test on Zorin was the Windows support. I thought it would just work out of the box and I could run Notepad++, but I didn't have much luck. It kept going into this cycle of opening up the software center to install the Windows support app, only to show that it was already installed. Righto, it's been all of five minutes and I have been able to remove and reinstall Windows app support via the terminal and a little apt install magic. And voila, Notepad++. Now I'm not calling this a W, but I think it's a good step. Obviously it didn't work straight out of the box, but if you are a Windows user, highlighting app support like Zorin OS has done might just be the little push you need to make the switch. So why Zorin OS? And would you pay for it? I have tried a few distros targeted at new users wanting to make the switch, and I think Zorin might be one of the best. There's great UI, great driver support, automatic updates, and a very familiar workflow. And somehow it all still feels very much like Linux. I was not a fan of the, at time, laggy UI, especially as they specifically mention it working on older hardware. But overall, the Zorin experience was very good. It might not be the best Linux desktop, but it might be the best GNOME implementation. Anyway, guys, hope that was enjoyable. Until next time.